Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Linux. We've got a lot of information for you today. Everything from NVIDIA updates to Linux on smartphones, kernel 5.16 news, and Pop! OS news. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and like the videos that we're doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Also, I've had a lot of comments from viewers that state that they can't reach Patreon from their country. So I've added a membership to my channel. It is in review at the present, but once that gets unlocked, you'll be able to support the channel that way. First bit of news we got today, NVIDIA 470.86 Linux driver released with VRR slash G-Sync fix. The NVIDIA 495 driver series is being treated as their new feature brand series with GBM API support and other additions while the NVIDIA 470 driver series continues to serve as a production branch version. Today, NVIDIA 470.86 driver release is a small one, adding a new NVIDIA driver installer option and fixing a VRR slash G-Sync regression. The variable refresh rate regression prevented DisplayPort and HDMI 2.1 VRR slash G-Sync compatible monitors from functioning correctly in the VRR mode. This yielded flickering and other problems, but should now be cleared up with the NVIDIA 470.86 Linux driver. So hopefully this will take care of some of those issues. Being in Linux and some of us out there running the NVIDIA graphics card, we know how much of a pain it can be sometimes to get those to work. So hopefully this will help those people out. Plus, the new driver installer option is the dash dash no dash pyramid switch and can be used for not installing the NVIDIA pyramid kernel module. The NVIDIA Peer Memory Kernel module is around GPU Direct RDMA Peer Memory support. This module, when paired with systems having a Mellanox Infaniband host channel adapter, can allow peer-to-peer read-write memory to the NVIDIA GPU video memory. This is for the GP computing scenarios, but if you aren't deploying such servers and not concerned about this peer memory capability, the kernel module can now be skipped over with ease. On to our next bit of news, and this is going to be concerning Linux in the mobile space. FOSH 0.14 has been released. If you're not familiar with FOSH, it's a mobile-friendly user shell for mobile Linux distributions. It was originally developed for the Librem 5 smartphone, and it's also been ported to a number of mobile Linux distros for the Pine phone. The new build brings seek buttons to the media player widget, support for automatically pausing the media player when headphones are unplugged, launch splash support, and a Wi-Fi hotspot mode indicator in the status bar, along with a bunch of bug fixes and other changes. Now, with that being released, Manjaro Arm Beta 18 with FOSH released for the Pine phone. Okay, this is a new build for the Plasma Mobile and FOSH user interface. The new FOSH release includes Linux 5.14.17 kernel, the FOSH 0.14 user interface, and GNOME 40.5 and more. So that's a big deal for Manjaro. Now, post-market OS released version 21.06 Service Pack 4 is coming out with FOSH 0.14 as well. And post-market's OS plus mainline for the OnePlus 5 and 5T has been updated with the 0.14 FOSH. Nemo Mobile in November of 2021, its new version is 0.6 with a new boot splash screen, updated device lock, and updated audio and Bluetooth functions. There's also support for using a mouse with Nemo, and there's initial support for running the operating system on PineTab tablet from Pine64. So Linux in the mobile space is definitely making leaps and bounds, so this is just news that we need to stay on top of, especially for those in the Linux community that support Linux and also want a mobile version that we can use on our smartphones. Okay, on to Linux gaming. Proton Experimental gets Age of Empires 4 working out of the box on Linux. Want to play Age of Empires on Linux? You can now. As of November 9th, Proton Experimental got fixes to allow Age of Empires 4 to work as well as Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Although, the Guardians of the Galaxy only works on AMD GPUs at present. Additionally, a rare crash when starting up Baldur's Gate 3 was also solved for this release. So that's some awesome news for gaming on Linux. Can't wait for the day where we don't need Windows to game anymore. Okay, some other good news that we have this week. Linux 5.16 kernel is going to be introducing the ability for a driver to probe hardware while powered off. The main set of ACPI and power management changes for Linux 5.16, while merged on Wednesday, were a secondary set of updates. 
Notable on the ACPI side are some changes in preparing for allowing Linux drivers to probe hardware while being powered off. This Intel contributed change to the Linux kernel is about allowing certain devices to be probed by a kernel module without changing their power states or being powered up. This is major. If it'll be able to scan hardware and be able to look for drivers for that hardware without having to start it up, use RAM, use more power, this is going to be a major step for the Linux kernel, at least in my opinion. If you don't think it is, let me know in the comments below. I've got more news on this coming up this weekend, so next week, be sure to watch This Week in Linux because I'll have a lot more information on this. Next up, Linux finally has an impressive cloud-like OS in Ubuntu web. Linux powers the cloud, but for the longest time, the operating system that single-handedly makes the cloud possible didn't really have a desktop distribution that offered much in the way of applications that interacted well with the cloud. We had Dropbox, and then also we had some third-party tools, but now Ubuntu Web changes that up for us. So even though Genome makes it possible to connect your desktop to Google Drive and things like that, it's not really taking full advantage of the cloud. Now we've got Ubuntu Web. It's promising to be like the Chrome OS for Linux, and it does achieve that. To be honest, when I first heard about the remix, I was doubtful. I had so many distributions that attempted what they're doing, and it just fell through the cracks. I'm going to be doing a review on this shortly, so keep your eye out on the channel so you can see just exactly what it does. And then to touch on something I did a short video on earlier this week about, if you haven't heard yet, Pop! OS is leaving GNOME. System76's Linux distro already has their own cosmic desktop that is based on GNOME, but apparently it has had enough of GNOME and wants to move to a Rust-based desktop. Even a Reddit discussion over the possibility of seeing a KDE flavor of Pop! OS revealed the more unexpected news that the outfit was working on its own desktop. System76 engineer and Pop! OS maintainer Michael Murphy commented that System76 will be its own desktop. When further poked about whether that meant a GNOME fork, the response was no. It is its own thing written in Rust. Now, I do want to say something about my channel here. When I posted that video earlier this week, I had viewers that were actually leaving comments, and this is what I got from Michael Murphy. A viewer had made a comment. I said, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Thank you for the comment, and thank you for watching the video. Michael Murphy from Pop! OS chimed in and said, Whatever we make will work fine on any Linux distribution. So that means if you like what Pop! OS puts out and you want to run it on a Linux distribution, we're going to have a new desktop environment based on Rust, and that comes directly from Michael Murphy at Pop! OS. I would like to send a shout out to him for letting the channel know, and also the viewers of my channel who are in my comment section can get the word directly from him. So that's it for this week in Linux. Do you have an opinion on anything I just talked about? If you do, please drop it in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and you like the videos that we're doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or you can become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. And for those of you who can't access Patreon from your country, we're going to have memberships coming to the channel here shortly, so hang in there. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.